Algebra 2 Cram, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Basics, Trigonometric Functions. Concept number four, standard position and the trigonometric function tangent. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 master. What we're doing here is so effective. I'm coaching you to turn your wants and desires of getting an A or perfect test scores into a new paradigm. I want to include everyone who needs a boost in Algebra 2, okay? So if I could stick every single math student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I probably would. So get your healthy dose by um, inboxing me at memedicine at gmail.com to order this complete Algebra 2 cram session. You have peers, classmates, and colleagues who could also really benefit from this cram session, so tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that they too can order the Algebra 2 cram session. You'll want to spread the word because they'll make great study buddies. The concept of cramming often has a negative connotation, but um, what people are actually thinking of is hurrying, which is a result of fear and can consequently be destructive to the learning process. We're not hurrying, okay? We're cramming. There's a difference. Um, hurrying can be likened to jam-packing tons and tons of unorganized information into your mental, spiritual DNA over a very tiny amount of elapsed time, whereas cramming is taking quantum leaps in your understanding in what seems like a moment's instant. So, um, journey with me as we explore standard position and how it relates to the determination of the tangent trig function. All right, let's go. Standard position and trigonometric functions. When an angle theta is in standard position, the tangent um, function of the angle is defined as all right, so definitely press pause if you need to and um, take a moment to think about the answer. All right, so hopefully by now you've arrived at the answer, but if you haven't, that's completely fine. If you purchased the entire um, Algebra 2 cram session, you would have, no you'd have noticed that um, standard position for an angle theta was explained in um, session one of the series. But if you did it, that's okay. Let's do a quick recap, okay? An angle theta is in standard position if its vertex is located at zero at the origin of our Cartesian coordinate plane. And um, the initial side ray is on the positive x-axis, and the terminal side ray ends in quadrant one, okay? This angle in standard position is also acute because it's bound between the quadrantal angles zero degrees and 90 degrees. And just in case you forgot, a quadrantal angle is an angle whose terminal side ray ends on either the x-axis or the y-axis, which is the case with both 0 degrees and 90 degrees, okay? So this angle is acute. It's bound between 0 and 90 degrees. And this terminal side ray that terminates in quadrant 1, we're going to call this ray R for short, all right? And let's choose a point P arbitrarily on this ray and we're going to say that point P sits right here, and we're going to cut this um, ray off, and we're going to make it into a line segment, okay? And for our purposes, point P extends um, horizontally x by x. There's, this could be any number, okay? It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, but we're going to cut um, the initial side ray here, by saying that x goes to this extent, okay, on the x-axis. 
And then we're going to say that P rises to the level of Y. Um, and then we're going to cut off our ray right here. So what we essentially did is we assolve, not assolve, I don't even know if that's a word. We resolve our terminal side ray into its X and Y coordinate. And the result is basically the formation of a right triangle. And this is really cool because this is going to simplify finding all our trigonometric values. Okay. All right. And so before we continue to explain what our original intent was, um, finding the tangent of the angle theta, we're going to take a look at one more thing about R. Whereas X represents the X coordinate, so that means it can have a positive sign if it's in quadrant one and a negative sign if the terminal side ray is in quadrant two. But if the terminal side ray is in quadrant, I mean in quadrant four, but if the terminal side ray terminates in quadrant two, X is going to be negative. And let's say the terminal side ray terminates in quadrant three, X is also going to be negative, okay? And the same for a Y. This Y here represents the Y coordinate, the level that R rises to. So we're not taking the absolute value, we're just going to take the raw value of Y, which if the terminal psi ray terminates in quadrant one, it's going to be positive. The same if it terminates in quadrant two, it's going to be positive. But let's say that the terminal psi ray you know, terminated in quadrant three. It's going to yield a negative value for the y coordinate, as well as if the terminal side ray terminated in quadrant four, there would be a negative value for the y coordinate as well. Okay? And as for the value of r, that's a measurement of magnitude, where r is equivalent to the square root of the x coordinate squared plus the y coordinate squared. All right? So no matter whether x or y is positive or negative, the result is always going to be negative because this is just a play on the distance formula and um, we're thinking about the absolute value, not the direction of travel, okay? So yeah, we're just looking at the distance. So r, what I'm basically trying to say, r is always going to be positive. But for finding the tangent function, we don't even need to know r because it doesn't come into play. So for any um, angle theta, whether it's written in a Cartesian coordinate plane or not, in such a right triangle, the tangent is going to basically be the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, which in our case is y over x. So let's just go ahead and represent that. The tangent of theta is equivalent to the opposite side, which is, which is in our case y, divided by the adjacent side to the angle, okay, which is in our case x. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that grammatically correct, but um, I think you know what I mean. So overall, intellectual comprehension of um, this concept was not difficult at all, okay? And after the short amount of time it takes to complete this entire Algebra 2 cram session that you're going to get upon purchase, you'll be able to answer a battery of questions about Algebra, algebra 2 concepts as well as trigonometry and geometry because these are also two subsets of the Algebra 2 topic, okay? All right, so thanks for tuning in and you're going to do great in whatever your academic um, venture is.